Sitting around the ballroom, they're talking about tomorrow when they're taking Johnny away. Said he wasn't no good, they were done with things that he should. That's all the judge had to say. He went in the army when he was 18. Crazy young Irish and me. All right. We are we're back, Danny. Brendan right. Hearn on a Wednesday. <laughs> I tell you what, we're recording this on a Wednesday. Uh, I'll give a first public apology to the people at home. Ah, I'm not gonna really apologize, but if you're invited to somebody's like kind of like, hey, check out my new house, and they pour you a glass of whiskey, and they pour you another glass of whiskey, and then you me, you drink it, and then when you open up the show, it's a complete surprise. What happened? <laughs> I was just as surprised as the people. At no, home. I, I. First off, I think that was uh, if we give them report cards out, that was like a B minus performance from you. You're still making the honor roll. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll still make the honor roll. Yeah, that, was, um, that was fine. I don't know if for the uh, you guys are going to hear this on Monday, but if you guys uh, were looking for the YouTube, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. Let's just put it this way. If I have to do cuts in the middle of an episode because I fucked something up, which yep. I happened the whole time, um, it makes it almost very hard to do the YouTube. If you do, like, one cut, there's, like, 34 cuts that mm-hmm. I made in there. So there's a chance that this is a lost YouTube episode. But this one will be on, and you can see how beautiful faces then. Correct. Um, and what else can we see? Oh, all right. First of all, yeah, we need a shout out to the real fans. I had to cut some stuff out because the audio was fucked up. Basically, when I moved these mics the other night, it actually was not anything to do with um, mistake really on my end, except the fact that when I put these mics in, something got changed on the back. Shit happens. So it happened. You gotta um, roll with the punches. I had to cut some audio out. Super fan, like people have been with us since day one. First oh, yeah. of all, I want to say it again. We have a higher female listenership than most podcasts. All right, it's because we love the we cause, love the females. Because we respect the women out in the world. Um, your body, your choice. God damn it. That's right. That's right. I drink my choice. Um, <laughs> we want to thank uh, these beautiful tumblers. Not for sale. These are one offs. Yeah. You know how many times? How many times you get asked? Uh, we want a tumble. We want a tumble. Yeah, exactly. Well, I go, uh, Mag- get fucked. Maggie's like, you're just going to be drinking that thing all week on the That's beach. Fine. I'm like, absolutely. 100%. Um, Ann Seely Mado, who went to college with her. She's my sister's roommate for years. Absolute super fan. Awesome, awesome Check person. Check these fucking things out. Dude. Yeah, bring that thing right up to the camera. Check these things out. It's a sticker. It's right on there. It's on there. <laughs> Uh, so we want to thank her. These came in the mail, and I was uh, we were in awe. So thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Um, also, we got tagged in a picture today. Um, and uh, hold on, because I said I, this is why I, this is why I switched it last time. Michaela. Michaela. Oh, Michaela McLeod. Yes, that's my exactly. fucking dog. Uh, she tagged What's us. What's her put, prom with her? She put our sticker on her. Um, like her, like, thermos thing. So, How did I not see that yet? Uh, I just put it to the story, oh, like, okay. like, 10 All minutes right. ago. Yeah, Michaela's my girl. Um, I put uh, Golden Girls, thank you for being a friend on there, too. <laughs> so, let, that, uh, is ve- she, that is massively appropriate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's a... I know her biggest movie is Hocus Pocus. Like, her, her mom, and her sister went as, like, the three girls. Yep. I know she's massively into that. She's big in a the theater. Michaela's my dog. Kata Kiss was her rap name in high school. How about that? <laughs> you got a rap name? I did too. It was, we're not going to write. All right, we don't need to get into it right phase now. Phase one. It was phase one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, sponsors. Let's just talk about it now. You can go first because sure. I get the middle one, and then we have three tonight. So, yes, so. sir. We get there. As I, as I told you before we started, let me get this shit in order. I didn't. Insulation situation, my man Sean Ballard. As you know, he's a mass safe partner. Most people would ever source national grid. You qualify already. What the fuck are you doing? Give them a call, goddammit. Single family home, 75% off the work. If you have a Irish battleship, all your tenants, all the people that pay you money, as long as you actually just fucking strong on them, say, hey, this is what we're doing. 100% off. All the units go forward. You get 100% off as long as you qualify. Um, like I said, last episode, the wife, you want to keep the wife happy, the kids happy. You want to get that man cave later on in life? You want to get it insulated? This is who you got to call. Insulation situation at gmail.com. Phone number 617-835-4784. Sean, I apologize. I'm pretty sure I gave them your personal phone number uh, <laughs> last week. So if they call that, don't be surprised. They got it from pulling the cork, and that's on me. So that's, that's right. On me. And I got a lot of friends out there listening to the show who are uh, homeowners. So yeah. a lot of you Melrose people that might be thinking about doing some upgrades, um, 
You, give, so you no better brainer. call you better call our boy. 75 If you gave me 75% off, I don't know, fuck anything that I don't eat, tampons, I'm buying yeah. them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stock up. Yeah. Right? 100% off of something, you're going to buy it regardless, right? Stock you're going to become a hoarder. So <laughs> become a hoarder with insulation. It's a fucking no-brainer. Um, so 50 Benny Street. I mean, that thing is in your head like like Jamie's roast beef. What's the address? Oh, fucking 44 Mods Street. 44 Street. Mod Street. <laughs> no free ads. <laughs> no free ads, but free ads. Um, 50 Benny Street. Cambridge Mass, go right over the bridge. You go to the Museum of Science, go there with your kids. Place is, like I said the other day, can't say it enough. The place is beautiful inside. Gorgeous. I can't wait to go back and have lunch and just hang out. Yeah, we um, got, I want to go there on like a regular day and just surprise Chris. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Chris Parsons, our buddy, the executive chef staff's owner, the man, the myth, the legend, the best fried chicken in the business. Best ponytail in the business. Yeah, mention uh, pulling the cork. Um, and they will probably give you a high five and then give you a fucking sick chicken sandwich. So we'll be doing another event there probably in the, in like, um, I'm thinking like in somewhere in like September or something like that. Yeah, it sounds reasonable. Um, so we'll do that then. But, but you check them out, lilypeacechicken.com. Best of the business. Absolutely. Uh, last but not least for this week, extra effort hockey. Uh, I told you last week they went to the States, a few teams. Um, Craig has eight teams, eight goddamn teams this maniac has. Like I told you, he's got the, the Boston Bruins logo tattooed on his hand like a goddamn psycho. Um, <laughs> two 8U teams, one 10U team, one, two, one U12 team, two U14 teams. The guy knows who he's talking about. Thousand feet of synthetic ice. You can't fucking beat it. Um, Speedworks happening speed, right now. Uh, I just saw the update on Facebook. He's he's he. The guy just doesn't. St- he does no. not stop. And to your point, you said this the other night, and I was surprised to me because I was basically blacked out during the episode. Yep. But um, I mean, the guy's only been going for like two years. Like Le- less and, than that, dude. The place is that. loaded up. My buddy, shout out to my buddy Greg Huntley again. I know I mentioned it last week, but Reed Huntley yep. plays goalie there. He said he. He doesn't know what made his son smile more, the fact that I said that they said he was a sick goalie or that said how many F notes would drop between that and <laughs> when he shut it off. So uh, shout out to Reed. So, yeah, so extra effort hockey. They call it Newberry Street. We know it better as Route 1 South. Uh, you got to go in there right at the bottom. Craig will, will uh, welcome you with open arms. Reach out to him, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, if you need his number, you can give it to me. He didn't give it to me on the uh, on the ad, but I have it. If you need to reach out, reach out to me and uh, mention Paul the Cork. If you do see him, and he will also give you a high five and slap in the nuts. That's right. Awesome. Um, all right, so we're doing tonight. We, your idea originally was one hit wonders. Yep. And Actually, it was it wasn't fully my idea. It was one of our listeners, Paul Doobie. Okay. Um, nice. And he was like, "You got to do one hit wonders," and I was like, "You're right." And then you came up to me and you were like, let's do one hit wonders, but let's do all fucking two. Kind of like what we do with frauds and good guys. A little bit. Yeah. So it's expanded. It's yeah. like anything that was like here and gone. Wait, before we get on this, because yep. I wanted to say this last week, but you kind of fucking rushed me off because you were shit faced. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Very um, guilty. Listen, we don't have a date yet, but we've already talked about it. We're going to do a fundraiser Halloween party. Yep. And yes. You're all invited. You have to buy a ticket. Yes, it's going to a good cause. Here's the kicker. It has to be 80s or 90s themed. Yep. So I don't give a shit what you do. You want to be fucking elf? You want to be if you want to dress up as elf? Go nuts. Fucking if you elf, elf if you want to if you want to be the quarterback McMahon from the from the Chicago Bears with the white headband, go for it. It just has to be 80s or 90s themed. We're in that era, right? You're in your 40s. I'm in my 30s. I think yep. we can all agree. If you want to come up dressed like a fucking goth and listen to corn all day, that's fine. It just has to be 80s and 90s themed. Yep. What does that have to be? 80s and 90s themed. Don't come in there dressed like fucking, uh, I don't know, young Jeezy. He's out. You're not getting a fucking ticket. All right? If it's a movie, if it's a commercial, I don't give a shit. Be creative. But... Um, we obviously know where it's going to be. I just don't have the date yet. Yeah, we're working on we're it. We're working on that, but just uh, get the wheel spinning now. I want to see some good costumes. It's going to be for a good cause, and uh, we'll keep you posted with that. But sometime September or October, we're going to have ourselves a little fucking get-together, a little, I love it. little hoopra. A couple of things really quick before we start. Um, you were on, um, sorry, you were on John Costello's. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, Rebel Roos' yes, radio sir, show. On July 4th. Yes. Um, and... I was playing golf, so I got to let's do it finally today. Yep. Uh, first of all, I want to say this. Thank John Costello for being a supporter of the show. Oh, um, I love the guy. I listen to his show every week on my computer. I every told you single this. week. When I'm, when I'm doing my like, shit I don't want to do, which is like 
bills and shit for work. <laughs> I put him on the background to make just me, to, just to make like, you smile, yeah, make a me little happy bit. a little bit. Yep. Um, I want to say one thing about him because if you haven't listened to him, you gotta check him out. If you, I mean, if you like Irish music, you it must listen each week. Um, and I was turned on, like I said, I, I got onto him through my uh, through my postmaster guy there, um, yep. John. Down the uh, guy's the fucking man. Um, but regardless, his interviewing skills are sick. Like, dude, he dude. has loaded up with, with legit, dude, fucking Dateline shit so, questions. So he called me beforehand, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to give you the backside, backside of it, right? He called me beforehand. Hey, Danny, sorry to bother you. And I go, don't ever say that again in your life. You will never bother <laughs> me, all right? But he called me and he goes, I'm going to, you know, we're going to talk about your, your podcast. Like, it was an interview for us. Yeah. Which he did not helping us out. He did not have to do helping us out. And then because it was the fourth, he was like, "I'm not going to tell you the questions, but I have like four or five questions loaded up for you. Are you ready to do that?" And I go, "Yeah." And I was with my family, and I go, "I gotta fucking go." I was in the zone, right? (laughs) So like, he gave me like the minute and a half. He was like, "You'll be on a minute and a half," and uh, I I just he came on and like he was on the radio like I, yeah. it was fucking strange yeah you know and like he is so good at what he does oh yeah he's awesome and then he just introduced me like I was fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin yeah. and I'm just a regular schmo volunteering at the local park you know I, what I mean dude. it was dude it was so fun I it was it. like 15 minutes of like pure fun I thought it know? was great you know what's funny is that I'll just say this real quick that like he said he made a comment about how what he likes about the show is that it's like it's like the shit that gets said on like the like the you know the, the warehouse floor mm-hmm. or like the, you know that's that's how back you know basically the kitchen of the fucking restaurant right, right? which is kind of our idea for the whole thing absolutely I had the t- most famous person I interviewed for we interviewed the guys from the show SWAT not Shamar Moore but David Kim, Lim who's like one of the stars on like whatever that NBS, NBC show is right yeah they play cornhole nice guys Fucking vanilla pudding. Like, All right. I mean, <laughs> dude, you know what? I mean, they, they have nothing in common. A little bit of you tapioca. Know? Oh, dude, it was like, it was like, uh, uh, anyways, point being, listening to him, like, in no, you talk, a, like, he is a, the fucking salt of the earth, he's real a, deal. He's a Pedro Martinez, a fucking he radio. He throws fucking he's 95. He's unbelievable. Fucking all day long. He's so good. Johnny, thank you again. Um, I'm glad you listened, man. I'm glad to keep the laps going while you're delivering the nation's mail, as you That's call right. it. Um, I, Forever grateful as you as a friend, and I, I fucking love you to death, pal. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll say is that I, I thought, of, we, we talked about this on the podcast, that every time we finish an episode, we throw a YouTube on for a couple of uh, tunes at least, yeah. and or like comedy or whatever we got tuned up, but it's always say something first. First one. Timberlake and, um, and Stapleton. Stapleton. And today I'm walking through Target trying to find a fucking... Speaker for the beach because I don't know where my thirty speakers went. Right, I have I have some. I, a few dude, I, I found one. Uh, but I'm walking through and all of a sudden on the fucking target, fucking overhead comes say something. Really? I thought you were gonna pop down from an <laughs> elevator and I was gonna fucking pick up a guitar and be like, fucking whole place is just fucking clapping That'd going be great. nuts. <laughs> Anyways, not, I'm yeah. like, well, I'm gonna stay here until the song's over. Now yeah, you have to. Like I'm certain, milling around the fucking certain rules. Yeah, the frozen chicken section of Target, <laughs> like fucking just fucking bobbing my. So head. why are you just dancing in front of fucking Tyson's <laughs> Buffalo Fingers? <laughs> all right, one hit wonders. One um, hit wonders. All types of topics of one right, hit wonders. And, and I, I'm always merges, like I said. It's a little bit like fraud. It's a little bit like all that stuff mixed. But it's like, um, and I look at it too, like things that things that have, were here and they're gone now, and like or. Or maybe things that were here and now we wish they were gone too. Fads that have happened Ooh. that haven't ended. I didn't, when I did my list, I did not think of that. Well, I think this could end up being a recurring thing too. That's so, fine. Um, all right, I'll start off. Please. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here's here's one that was big when I was a kid, and I never fucked with it at all. No interest. And I don't know if I'd call it a fad. Uh, I saw one today. This is how I thought about it. I thought this was a drug for a minute. No. <laughs> I, I like, fucking... He's definitely going to say angel dust. No. <laughs> I walked into my uh, sister's house, and her my niece has a fucking Ouija board on the fucking table. Oh, wow. Let me tell you right now. Yeah, I don't fuck with those. I don't fuck with Ouija boards. No, we already okay? talked. We, we don't like horror movies. Dude, I don't open up the fucking pathways no. of spells and no. exorcisms. I believe no. in spirits. I don't need to be getting fucking possessed by anybody. Yep. That's a fad that's be- that's a fad that like you find a Ouija board in the back of your closet, do yourself a favor. Leave. Don't Leave. don't yes, don't burn burn the house down. <laughs> Get out because yeah. something fucking horrible yeah. is gonna happen to you. Dude, we were I told well, 
I don't know if I told you, but July 3rd, I went down to Rentham. For, we went down for a, a family party down there. Not my family. But we, we know better than yeah. not go that side. We went down to a family party down there. And on the road to Christie's cousin's house, beautiful house, by the way, right on the lake, um, I, I've seen the movie Jeepers Creepers once. <laughs> Pretty positive it took place right there. <laughs> it was just fucking fields and fields and fields. I have a Nissan Pathfinder. That thing was going 97 miles an hour <laughs> fucking through that thing. And I was like, where the fuck are we? And I was like, he's got to pop out. It was like 1 o'clock when we were driving down. I was scared of my life. <laughs> fuck that. Dude, we're- my son and his cousin watched this movie that I heard that is the big, like the scariest movie like in recent years called Hereditary. Oh. So he goes, do <laughs> okay. you know how much, I want to tell you how much of a pussy on it. I've never admitted this to anybody, right? So people at home, there you go. Have at it. Do you know how much of a fucking pussy I am? I hear about these movies, what and you- then, so he tells me about it. I'm like, yeah, I have no fucking interest. I read the Wikipedia to know, because that's not scary. So like, I want to know what happened. And then I feel like I somehow wasn't that big of a pussy, but yeah. it's even being bigger than a pussy than not watching the movie. Yeah. I, my entire family loves horror movies. And yeah. Like, come down and watch it. No. Most no. Of it. I'm fucking good. I'd so, rather go upstairs and read the thesaur- uh, th- 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 thesaurus. Read you boards are out. Now you spoke about read them real quick. I want to say this. I picked out this one tonight. Yep. So this is Boston Skyline, but there's yep. a bunch of different ones. That's the BU Bridge. Oh, they switched it on us. This was a different one. We had a different look earlier. But anyways, we are kind of like around the corner there. <laughs> we but before, they had an angle where see we could see. Waving? Yeah, you could see us waving. All right, you're up. All right. So this was a... Uh... Ouija board, by the way, if you're listening, not a fraud. You're not a fraud. I believe in you. So just want to let you know that. Dude, I... real quick, the, the Ouija board. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. Brian Murphy, because that's the first time and last time I ever used one. <laughs> I saw the shit move. <laughs> no shit. I have seen it. Forrest too. Gumped out of there. Yeah. Fucking gone. <laughs> Slept over his house. I lived on the same street. See you later. Dude, Goodbye. I don't know. You can't tell me. I don't know. You can tell me anything. There's never been a person that's been like, oh, Ouija boards are fake. No. Because they're not. They're real demon shit. Dude, like. I, I'm all set. Yeah. And, they, and, and who sells it? Fucking Mattel Brothers or something like yeah. that? Yeah. They're fucking... They're there was a girl that was, like, wicked into Ouija boards. Part of the fucking the day, Illuminati. And, yeah, she was wicked into Ouija boards back in the day. Shocker, she's dead. <laughs> I mean, there you go. I mean, she wasn't dead because... Want to know how she died? <laughs> yeah. Put her hands in that little triangle with the yeah. little magnifying glass. Yeah. yeah. Fuck out of here. Yeah, exactly. She went to hell. All right. This was a uh, this was a thing back when I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, I want to say. I was still in Pup Warner, but I was, like, on the verge of, like... Getting hair on my balls, type of thing. Yeah. Dying your hair, bleach blonde. <laughs> and there's pictures out there of me surfacing, and it was the worst decision of my entire life. Now, every Caucasian male at the time tried to be Eminem, right? Not every, but the kids I hung around with, they all wanted to be Eminem. Yeah. So I begged and begged and begged my mother, let me dye my hair, right? So first, it was, she just let me do the highlights, right? Yeah. So I had an aunt, my, my uncle's wife is a hairdresser. She came over with the net, poked the <laughs> fuck out of your head, right? And they pull hairs out, and then they dye that. That's how it worked, right? Yeah. So I had that first. And then I go, Almost Mom. like frosted tips, kind yes. of. Yes. Right? Yeah. Precisely the same yeah. exact thing, right? But I didn't wear it as, like, a tips back <laughs> in, like, the early 90s. I wore it fucking like a mushroom cut, like an idiot, yeah. right? <laughs> so finally convinced my mother... Let me dye the whole fucking head, right? She's like, all right, Bruce, fucking dickhead, <laughs> yeah. gilly balls, whatever <laughs> she wanted to call me that day. And so I'm like, all right, 45 minutes in, she doesn't tell me this, your head burns. Really? Oh, badly. And I'm fucking sitting there. I'm, Which is why they put the net on you when they do the... Dude, I'm you. sitting there fucking <laughs> smacking my head. Finally, I just gave up. And I ripped the thing off, washed it all out. And I did not have bleach blonde hair. Nope. My color hair was roughly somewhere in between that orange and yellow. <laughs> and it was it was there. And I remember going to football practice that day and getting drastically made front of, right? <laughs> Rightfully so. And I go, I will never, ever do this again. Ever. And there was kids doing it for like a year. It was like a year thing. Like, when like Slim Shady first came out, yeah. everybody wanted to do that. And it was the worst thing Caucasians have ever done since putting raisins in fucking potato it salad. It was dumb. 
fucking stupid. You know what's funny? It was such a fad, and like even I. So when you you were doing that, you said you're eighth grade, right? Somewhere yeah, seventh, eighth seventh grade, grade. Yeah. So I was in college, and my my buddy did it, like kind of half trying to be funny, and he looked like a complete dickhead, like complete. Yeah, you look like a complete yeah. idiot. Yeah. And like, but here's the thing, like that was the thing. So like, girls wanted you to have yeah. blonde hair. Yeah. So I did it, and I didn't complete the process. <laughs> so I just had fucking. Oh, peach. I had like peach colored hair. I can find the picture, but it's totally tight. something it's that fucking would, disca- would, it was disgraceful. That is totally something that I would have done. Yep. Um, <clears throat> all right, here's one that's that's kind of come and gone. Scenes day for sure, um, and for good reason. And I want to get I want to dive into this a little bit. Boy bands. All right. So now I know how you feel about now. Here's here's what all I'll say about boy bands. My wife is a. Massive fucking fan of New Kids on the Block. I think I've said that before. All right, so here was before you go any further, everyone has to have one. And you think that mine is in sync because of Justin, it is not. Who is your favorite boy band? You have to have one. You have to pick. Gun to your head. Uh, I would say 98 Degrees. Okay. I'm New Edition. Wait, who does Bye Bye Bye? That's in sync. All right, so in sync's mine. All right, so that's my number two. Yeah. New Edition is. I almost don't consider that a boy band. Because is that Black Brendan? No, because they were like original and they had good music. <laughs> I consider boy bands to be like I, the you know boy- what? I'll be honest. I consider boy bands to be white yeah, kids from the suburbs. They, they are. They you are. know what I mean? You're absolutely. Like, right. I guess you could call it Jackson Five a boy band, but Jackson Five throws fucking ninety eight mile per hour gas you're, the whole time. You actually win this round. You yeah. win. Yeah. You, you're right. But they're like all right, all right. No, I I understand what you're saying. When you say boy bands, not the first thing that comes to people's heads is new edition. No, in sync, boy shoot. Uh, Backstreet Boys, 98 Degrees, LFO. Remember them fucking losers? <laughs> O-Town. Oh, O-Town. First off, <laughs> O-Town. I watched every episode of that fucking show. <laughs> Liquid Dreams? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm good. Oh, my God. We have to throw that video on tonight. So, and you know what? Like, they, I mean, I know that obviously it was kind of like the Elvis thing. It was like, all right, let's do let's do this with white kids and, like, it'll sell great, right? right? They were right. I mean, it's true. It did. Uh, but I do not consider new, like, if you put new edition next to, like, new kids, I'm like, that's... That's like putting Michael well, Jordan next to well, like, but, like, like. But that's what bothers me, right? So every time that they do a fucking reunion tour, they're always together. And I'm like, get these fucking crackers out of my face. I, I totally agree with you. I told her, now, I will say this too. How often I, can we look at fucking Donnie Wahlberg just go, yeah, your girlfriend loved us 117 dude, years ago. Dude, enough, I, enough, Donnie. In my opinion, all those bands pretty much have like one talented kid. Whereas New Edition yeah, is like, Jonathan every guy Knight. is nasty. Dude, they were all unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Even even cracked out Bobby, right? Yeah. Bobby had his fucking, probably the best career out of all of them. Right? Yep. Out of, I, with the exception, and I'm obviously saying this bias, but with the exception of Justin Timberlake, was he the most successful solo artist from a boy band? Bobby Brown? Uh, had to have yeah, been, Yeah, right? had to have been. Had to have been. Yeah. Um, so anyways, going back to that, <clears throat> first of all, nothing new. White people appropriating fucking black <laughs> culture and fucking doing it wrong, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Doing a shit version of it. Yeah. So here's what I was gonna say. I knew a kid. I know. Uh, I know of. I know one personally. I know a kid that was in a boy these band. So we were. By the way. Yeah, oh, by the way, we're on seltzers today because we got the tumbles. Unbelievable. These and are it so feels good. so good. It's like drinking out of an ice cream truck. It's unbelievable. Have a bomb pop uh, in it, it, Like the last thing I wanted was a beer tonight. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I knew one kid that was in one when we were like eighth grade, yeah. right? And it was like a no, nothing like, like I'd heard he was in one, whatever, nothing, anything. I know a girl went to high school with her Her husband's like a ridiculously talented kid. He was on uh, the Disney show with fucking, he was on Kids, what's it, was it Kids Incorporated with Justin Timberlake and Britney and all them? Yes. Mickey Mouse Club. Mickey Mouse Club. He was on that with them. Really? And he was in another, like not a boy band because it had a girl in it, same kind of idea. And called, I think called The Party. And they were like. If you don't get all the way there with that type of band, <laughs> it haunts you. Like it haunts you even if you get all the way with one of those bands. Right. If you get don't get all the way, if you get halfway there, it's like. And you know what would suck? Where I feel like worse than anything in the world. And I know this is gonna sound like bitter. And I like now I will say this. Like if, if somebody listens to the show and they're like, "Danny's a fucking star," take him. I'd be like, you know what, dude, go for it. Now, if I was like 15. And we were doing a boy band together, yep. or a show like the Mickey Mouse Club. And then you turn into Justin Timberlake, and I turn into like Tom, who works like the music store. Yep. I'm gonna want to put a fucking gun in my mouth yeah, right away. Like that yeah. would fucking blow, dude. Yeah, that you, would absolutely fucking blow. I mean, and now you're gonna tell everybody, yeah, I used, I used to be with him. Everyone's like, yeah, all right, dude. I do. You know what the funny thing is? 
the fifth guy in those bands could be any. It's like the fifth guy in the hoop team. It could be anybody. It could be like a million other people can, that were just as talented. I can name four out of the Michigan five. I can't name the fifth. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, that's my thing on boy bands. Uh, that if you don't get all the way with a boy, if you're thinking, if you're thinking about putting your kid in a boy band, don't and <laughs> don't just you don't, don't retract that statement <laughs> and, and retract that thought. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> retract that thought. That's just it's not going to end well for him ninety nine point nine percent of the time. It doesn't even well end well really for the guys in the boy bands. Like who's the kid? Aaron Carter is that his name? Oh, he's Fucking not mess. He is not doing well. No, and his brother too. What's his uh, brother? Nick. Nick. Yeah. No, so Nick Nick's was like halfway Nick, o- No, Nick was in the boy band. Aaron Carter was the little brother who just decided yeah. heroin was his best shot. Yeah. He, he was one of those kids who's like not you could punch him in the face a million times, he'd never learn his lesson. No. Um also most of those kids I feel like their parents are shitbags. Like if a lot of those parents, like if you're the type of parent that's like, hey, you know what, you're not gonna play sports, you're not gonna do any of this, but I'm gonna fucking live in Florida with you in a trailer so that you can take a crack at fra- fame, you're just trying to get rich off your kid. Mm-hmm. Like I you are a, like doesn't shock me at all that most of those people are pieces of shit. Well, yeah, that was a uh, that was a great one hit wonder. Speaking sure. of, I mean, for people that actually do one hit wonder, that, that was fucking very good. <laughs> uh, my next one is an, it's this is my last fashion one I think. In high school, I had a very different fashion when I than what I wear now. Sure, I had white tees down on my ankles. I had baggy jeans from Jabos. <laughs> but there was one thing I never did, and I'm very thankful for it, is I never had a belt buckle with my name on it. <laughs> that was a thing? Not only did it stop there, so, all right? So then, like, you, so you had this, like, studded out diamond, just for whatever whatever yeah. your nickname was in high school. Sure. Mine was Gilly, right? Yeah. So it would be a cubic zirconia belt buckle this big. <laughs> yeah. think I'm going to get one made think myself. Of, <laughs> think of, like, a, think of like, a, like a, the size of, like, a thing of butter. Yeah, right? <laughs> that thing. Right? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like the four pack. Yep. Yeah. And it just says Gilly on it, and it's all in cubic zirconia diamonds, right? <laughs> and people would tuck their shirts in so you could see a hern. You know what I mean? Like, like you we're get the these wa- made at the mall. By yeah, sure did in a kiosk. <laughs> in a kiosk, you'd, you'd walk around for like an hour <laughs> while they were putting these together with fucking Scrabble pieces, right? So then that wasn't enough. Then the fucking guys that do the kiosk were like, "Oh, you like that? It says your name. Look at this." And they put in a fucking digital keyboard. So now, not only could you write Gilly, you could write Gilly is the fucking man. And it would scroll. (laughs) scroll. (laughs) No, that can't be true. You have a fucking laptop in front of you, I swear to God. They would put a fucking, you could have a full-blown paragraph coming across your belt buckle. And you would go to Roller World or fucking Taboo every weekend in Saugus. And girls would just stare at your cock all day because they're trying to read <laughs> what essay you just fucking put across your pants. All right? And I want to pull in the cork one of these so fucking I bad. swear to God on my parents, on fucking everybody I love, this was a thing. It started out with, like, cubic zirconias. Think about the size of, of a phone, right? These, these couldn't have been cheap, I feel like. No, they, I mean, then, I mean, they were expensive <laughs> as fuck. They were 25 bucks. You know yeah. what I mean? If they were a thing now, they would probably be $7,500. Sure. Right? And yeah. I, I'm dating myself, but, like... It is what it is. <laughs> Full blown sentences. Like, I wish you had one and you still had it. That I never, mean, I never had one. I, I said that the could you Did you decide you didn't want one or you couldn't yeah. get one? There's certain things that like I thought like all right, Caucasians are going too far. <laughs> that was one of them. And do rags. Like if you're a white kid with a do rag, you, you fucking you're a loser. You're, you're never, fun. you're never ever gonna get waves in your life. You're ever. Fraud. You have Asian hair. Stop it. Yes. You know. You're a fraud. So I. When you do, after this episode, we can look at it so you know I'm not making oh, yeah, this up. yeah, I'll find it. They started out with the cubic zirconia diamonds, and they would, the diamonds would follow it almost immediately. And then two months later, they had these digital keyboards, and you just told the guy what to write, and he would put it on there, and it would scroll past it like a fucking billboard. Dude, I'm telling you right now, if I'm not wearing one of these belt buckles at fucking <laughs> the Halloween party... <laughs> Put, take me out back and fucking end my life because it, it was a waste of time. My whole life was a fucking waste of time. Yeah. Um, the, the early 2000s were fucking strange, pal. <laughs> All right. I'll tell this. I'm gonna, the, my next one, I'm going to tell a story that I told on the um, on the old podcast. And this mm-hmm. kind of breaks down how what my life is Anyone? like. Yeah. Grab one. Um, okay. Break dancing. Oh. I'm going to tell you a tale. Oh. I'm going to tell you a tale. When oh. I was in the first grade, Breakdancing, breaking, the movie comes up. 
right? I watched it religiously. Okay. Breaking and comes be- out. And Beat Street. Yes. Beat Street. I got a great story with that, too. I, um, um, I bet you I have a better one, but go ahead. I'll just give it to you right now. My mother, like, found my porno movies in my room and then, like, shoved them all into my bed. But she found Beat Street and put it with my porno movies. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yours is better. Yours is better. That's hilarious. Dude, I was like, I turned 19 shades of red when I saw that. I'm like, oh, my God. Like... Well, Darcy. By the way, what a great name for a porno. I know. Street? I, D- <laughs> Darcy dated the main character. Shut up. I swear to God. The small, Are you the small me? dude, the main dude in Beat Street. No. Darcy dated him. Or I think, like, kissed him or made up. When I, put it this way when I had that movie on VHS, she came over and she goes, Oh, I know him. I go, What? And I guess he was from Boston. She was like, Yeah, I, I thought she dated him, but she'll listen to this and she'll tell me. She'll correct you. Yeah. Um, all right. So first grade, the movie comes out. I'm all right. Pete Street's a porno. Pete Street's a porno. That's unbelievable. Fuck it. I was gonna get to that part, but we'll start. We'll start there. Uh, so everybody in the grade is um, break dancing, right? Yeah. I can tell you right now, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. So like uh, Paul Doobie actually comments that I, I always put up these videos on my Facebook page. I'll play some tunes and shit. <clears throat> I can do a lot of shit pretty well. I'm not like lights out at any of them. I was a fucking lights out break dancer. I was so good that the sixth grade kids used to drag me behind the school at recess and oh, put the bucket. Battle- we're and battling. Drop the fucking drop the fucking thing down and be like, watch this fucking kid go. I was so good that my friends all wanted to go to a break dancing class that I went to, and the instructor was from like the city and like a crew, yep. and he was like, dude, I'll work with you on the side. Like you can't be doing this basic. Really? Shit. Like I was lights out. This is what brought us together. Second grade, right? I'm fucking king. I'm the king, right? By the fucking end of second grade, shit's out of style. Done. And I'm like, what happened? And that was my fucking... I I was like, my skill, my best skill was that. It was gone (laughs) by the time I was like seven and a half. I was eight years old. I was done. I was retired. Full retirement. I was such a breakdancer that in seventh grade, the yearbook, they said future profession, I wrote breakdancer. So... I always said that, like, I was always shy with, like, girls and shit. Yeah. But, like, I would study videos of, like, different pop walk. Oh, yeah. Flares and windmills. <laughs> and I would just do it with my buddy Andy in the backyard religiously. And then finally at a dance, I just broke out. And people were like, what the fuck? And, I, again, it was first grade for you, seventh grade for me. It came back. It did it come did back. It did come back. I know, but it was too late. I was in college. It already, was... Like. I, it was the highlight of my life at that point. All right, I'm going to tell you the most embarrassing part of this. Because if my sister hears this, and I don't tell this part of it, it you know, when I tell you, it pains me to tell you the story. Did you lose that, like, battle? no, that the, uh, the, all the older kids had, like, nicknames for themselves. Oh, like, 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 like breakdance awesome. nicknames. Yeah. And uh, Transformers hadn't really caught on yet, but they had come up with these things called GoBots, which were, like, the fucking shitty Transformers, basically. It's all my name was fucking GoBot. That was my fucking name. <laughs> that, I, that's gonna be on my belt buckle. My belt buckle is gonna say GoBot at fucking dude, Halloween. But that's I'm gonna have a full fucking that is, jumpsuit. Honestly, though, that's probably a fucking phenomenal breakdancer name. The fucking great because they could go apart and come together again. Fucking Turbo and Ozone. Unbelievable. Yeah, those names were fine. Come Beat on. Street was always way better for me than uh, Breaking. Breaking. Well, because Breaking was kind of like goofy and Beat Street was like a well, real like. Here's the thing: Turbo was ten times better than Ozone. R.I.P. Ozone. Oh, dude. No, Turbo, Tur- Turbo with the fucking with the with the broom and he's just fucking dude, dude. Turbo, that was the most lopsided thing of all time. Like he didn't even look like it was like it was like Wesley Snipes was a uh, white man can't jump. But they like, tr- he's not a good basketball player. But he tr- they tried to make him like the Robin of that movie, and I was like, no, 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 he's no, the Batman. <laughs> he's the Batman. He's the Batman. He's the Batman. And then you had the girl with the fucking that was dancing at like uh. What did she came? That was stupid. That was stupid. I used to have to watch regular dancing movies. Yeah. Like flash dance so I could get to the break dancing <laughs> yeah, scene. Yeah. Like, because I'd be like, I want to see this kid fucking yeah. go at it right it now. It was when dial up internet. Damn, that should have been on a uh, one hit wonder, but whatever. <laughs> dial up internet. I used to go on this. There used to be a website called Breaking, and it would be. You think like people in New York are good? People in like Germany. Oh, that's where it's like Russia? Switzerland. Yeah, they're like, crazy. Where there's awesome. fucking swastikas everywhere. Yeah. They just listen to rap music and just fucking go to town. <laughs> and they're like, we hate these people, but we love this shit. <laughs> it's fucking wild. Don't go to the website Beat Street, by the way. It's a different website <laughs> yeah, than yeah. the movie. <laughs> 
Oh, dude, I forgot about that shit. Dude, I was such a break dance. I had a I had a white hoodie that was that wouldn't fit fucking Fitzy <laughs> in seventh grade, and it just said uh it said breaking on it. And it was like fucking it was so sick. And my mother was like, You're gonna fucking destroy it. I had like seventy two dollars, and that's how much it was. It was at seven fox and spill ball. <laughs> It was fucking, and I was like, I'm going to break the into this. I destroyed, it was a white fucking hoodie. What did you think was going to happen? You know? <laughs> what do you, uh, dude, I remember when I was at, uh, I told that story, kind of, I oh, it's so told the basics of that dance. story of the Cornwall podcast. And then when I was at like Worlds, like a bunch of these guys were at a club and the guys were like, we want to see breakdance. I'm like, what do I look like? A fucking wind up toy to you, motherfucker? Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, let me just fucking do some, mo- fuck off. <laughs> Why are you breakdance, motherfucker? Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, I'm a one trick pony now because people know I can dance. They're like, Gilly's here. Let's see some dance move. Like, fuck off. That's why I've kind of retired because I'm like, I will. When I'm drunk, I'll do it. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm not going to give it to you just because you fucking asked me to do yeah, it. Yeah, because you know that I'm good yeah, at it. Yeah, exactly. Fuck yeah. off. Um, all right. That was, that was a good one. <laughs> that was incredible. That was like a shared one. It Well, dude. We have a lot in common. I true. fucking love breakdancing, dude. <laughs> I might go We're going to be watching breakdance videos after we're done with this. 100%. Like, oh, my God. All right, so here's a one-hit wonder that probably isn't a one-hit wonder, but should it should be everyone's one-hit wonder if this happened to you. Jail food. <laughs> so if you go to jail once, shouldn't happen again. Yeah. But it does yeah. to a lot of people. Sure. So I used to work in a jail. Problem is I know a lot of inmates, right? Now, the majority of my people that have been in jail that listen to this have not been back. Actually, everyone that listens to this has not been back because I don't believe they have podcasts in fucking yep. in, in max, max security yeah. prisons. Yeah. Um, if they do, they'll shout out. The problem is, the problem is, right? Now, I love jail food. It sounds fucking disgusting. And you're right. You're like, why the fuck would you admit that on fucking a national broadcast? I'll tell you why. It's fucking the worst of the worst food that's made edible, right? But... You can't ask normal people like that straighten out their life in jail, right? Because yep. that does happen, not according to the you know mainstream media, but people do straighten out their lives and get their shit together. Yeah. But people that have been in jail, they don't want to come home and eat that shit, right? Some people do, which is that's why I say it should be a one-hit wonder, but it's not. Yeah. Some people will come home and talk about, yeah, I really want to make a batch right now, and they'll go out and get fucking ramen noodles. Smoked sausage, fucking squeeze cheese, pepperoni salsa, put it in a fucking trash bag, and they're like, yeah, we're going to eat good tonight. Meanwhile, right across the street's a very good restaurant. Yeah, yeah. They're just stuck in their ways, institutionalized. It's a fucking, it should be a one-hit wonder. When you go to jail, eat it as much as you can. Talk to all your friends about it. Don't ever eat it again. <laughs> Including myself. Now, I am a, I'm guilty of this. I was in a YouTube fucking rabbit hole one day. Of like jail food, like recipes? Rabbit. And I was with my son, right? So now he's like, can we make that? And I'm like, yeah, we can. Yeah. So I made it at home. Yeah. Not nearly as good as like professional criminals. Sure. Right? These dudes are fucking chefs. And I'm, I'm not kidding. Like if we ever get, that's a great episode. We should have like. That's a great episode, jail we, food episode. No, like to have my buddy come in here and just like make some, oh wait, your brother-in-law's a CEO. Yeah, we could have them fucking, we could have them fucking about, both sides of the Talk about jail. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I love it. So, listen. By the way, can I tell you real quick? Go, go, go ahead. Finish, finish. No, I'll but like, no, no, finish, finish. There is the amount of like creativity in jail when you have nothing to do. It's, I, I can't explain it through a microphone. Like it's just, they have nothing better to do and they're like, yeah. all right, this will work. This You can watch people on TikTok, all that shit. Like people that, it should be a one-hit wonder, but they just want to keep reliving the fucking dream. Yeah. Making Jolly Rancher candy out of fucking mm. sugar and, like, crayons. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. You're like, this is fantastic. No, it's not. You know, it's good. <laughs> a regular Jolly Rancher. <laughs> you know? But I I just think that should be a one-hit wonder. I think if you have done the time in jail, don't ever go back. Yeah. They're already overpopulated. You're not going to have a good time. Yeah. Stop fighting for your life. Yeah. Don't get shanked with a piece of a rusty nail. Yeah. I just... Talk to the people about how bad the food was and just be like, no, nah, it was pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think uh, I, I, I have to say, so my brother-in-law, you, who you've met a few times, is a CEO. And um, when me and my, my son and him and his nephew were somewhere, and then we, like, went, we, went out, we had a big party. And then, like, the next day I was driving home, and my son's like, ah, oh, I got to go to school tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, I got to go to work. I go, ah, 
I go, guess what though? Uncle Nate's gonna go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna go to jail. I'm like, hey, I got, I got so much respect for COs and, and as Johnny Costello was saying the other day, cops, everything. Uh, guys do that work. I will, I will tell you right now. I've worked in the jail. I was there for a year, and then I went down to security for a year, and then we all got laid off because of the recession. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. I fucking hated that job. But I worked with a bunch of good guys, and I met a lot of good guys that were inmates. Dead serious. Murderers, yeah. fucking people that jaywalked, good people. Yeah. There was a lot of shitbags in there. I'll tell you what never changed, though. I worked there on Thanksgiving night, and I worked there on Christmas night. And the demeanor is just fucking... Everyone's just sad. Yeah. Right? Yep. Now, granted, you do the crime, do the time. But, like, now I'm... I have to provide for my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm miserable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now I got to go buy all these guys that are fucking <clears throat> away from their families, <clears throat> right? Yep. Regardless if I like them or not, and everyone's just fucking sad. Yep. It sucks, dude. A lot of those people that do that job, never mind the people that do the crime. People that do that job, that's a fucking terrible day for you, too. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I'm making good money. You're really not. At that, at that point, like, everyone else is at the house fucking eating leftovers. Yeah. And... This guy's, you're giving him a fucking chunky sandwich on a piece of Wonder Bread. Yeah. You know, it just fucking blows. It does. So, make it a one-hit wonder, guys, for those that are listening. And I, I know a few of my boys are listening to this weekly. I know you guys did. Make Maybe, maybe make the ramen one more time over here at the garage bar. Yeah, I'll eat it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I got a I white trash. Scared. I got a white trash palate. Like, I got a oh, carnival person's dude, palate. Like, I, I love it. I hate the fact that I enjoy it. But I hate <laughs> the fact that people, like, want to embrace that, like, they can still make it, just leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave I it alone. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. I think I've t- I, I'm not sure if I've talked about this uh, here. Um, I definitely haven't talked about it here. And this is, I, I know I'm breaking some rules here because this is a fad that started and hasn't ended, okay? It's been going on for a long time. Okay. I just hope it goes away, but it's not going to. Um, <clears throat> it's also a little bit of a fraud, a little bit of a good guy. But I'm going to put it into this category of fads that I wish would just go away. And people who are fucking idiots. <laughs> if you have a baby on board, fucking sign on the back of your car. Mm. You are so Preach. dumb. Preach. You are so dumb. Like, it almost makes me want to be violent, like, with the person. <laughs> the guy. What do we... What, okay. Let's just logically look at this, okay? Um, this would be equivalent... To me, walking down the street in uh, in a club or whatever, or like downtown uh, New York, late at night by myself with a huge sign on me that says, "Hey, I'm a pussy." Uh, like, so if you want to take advantage of me, you gotta ruin my life immediately. Um, I have a baby in this car. What is that gonna change about anybody? A anything criminal? that I'm doing? Yeah. A criminal is not gonna change uh, because someone that's oh s- fuck. I gotta get my life together. You know what? I gotta. This lady's got a baby, baby in that car. Baby on board. And if you're a fucking dude with a baby on board, fucking thing on there, and you're driving a Prius, uh, like I said, drop the baby off at um, you know Safe Haven, Haven and just go off the Tobin. <laughs> um, I just think it has no. It's been around since I was little. I mean, when I first happened, they used to have they used to go back and forth. The signs used to go like this. It was like, it was like, yeah, they used to like go like wave at you. Yeah, they used to like go back, baby on board, like. Like, oh, no. Like, what, oh, I better slow the fuck down for you. I also hate... What if you went up to the car and be like, roll your window down? Like, what can I help you with? Just want to say hi to the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I also hate people who put, like, slow down signs, kids live here. Kids yeah. live everywhere! Yeah. They fucking live every place. Yeah, I, I get that's it. pretty fucking like, dumb. It's dumb. And then they come out and they give you, like, the... Like, and you're not even going that fast. I'm yeah. like, you've probably gone faster than you should down the street yeah. before, you fucking asshole. Yeah, you I, saw something drastic happen, and now you, now everyone's a victim. Everybody's a victim. Baby on board. Like, yep. are you vaccinated? Are you, like, fucking... Leave me every, alone. Leave me alone. I agree. <laughs> so I never, like, even... Occur, like, how does it occur to you to be like, do you know what we need for this fucking car now? Yeah. We need to let everybody know we got a fucking kid in here. So that if they want to rob us, that's yeah. actually a sign that these are people are easy to rob. Yeah, no like because nobody tough has a baby on board <laughs> sign. Nobody packing a gun has a baby on board no. sign. No, at they, all. They definitely have multiple credit cards in their wallet, <laughs> yeah. and they're gonna bring you to wherever they want. Yeah, and you could just drag their ATM through the fucking. And ringer. guess what? The person sitting next to your baby is the person that's robbing you right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you, now you should have a new sign that says "kidnapper on board." Yeah. So that's my uh, my. Let me give you a little advice out there to the aspiring parents of the world. Do not buy one of those signs. Somebody gives it to you. Do the right thing. Open up your trash barrel. T- throw it right in there. T- 
tie it immediately, throw it to the nearest fucking side of the Let's road. Let's start ending this fad, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm trying to spearhead this operation. All right, I lied, because I think, I think this is part of fashion, too. Okay, that's fine. I, mean, I did too much fashion. That's stupid. That's all right. But that's all right. Two-way pages. <laughs> they did not last long. <laughs> they everyone were out had, soon. Everyone had a pager. Yep. And then they were like, Motorola was like, yeah, but look at this two-way pager. And it's just like allowed you to text yeah. for like 90 seconds. And then all of a sudden people are like, cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine throwing all your fucking dough. Two-way pages. Like how much was a two-way pager back then? At the time? Yeah. Hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Like hundreds. A, lo- a lot of money. Yeah. Like, pr- like honestly, probably like, I don't know, because I, I feel like pages you rented, didn't you? Yeah, I don't think you owned it. It right. was like it was like you leased the fucking you leased, pager. Yeah. yeah. I, so like, but I think you bought these outright, and I want to say they were upwards of like two fifty to three hundred bucks. Yeah. Those did not last. They were in like one rap video, and then everyone was like flip phones immediately afterwards. It was fucking crazy. And the irony is that it also was like as that fad ended, you needed to own have access to another fad. Which was public telephones. Well, no, but you needed to have another two-way pager. So, like, you could... What Wait, you, I don't know a bunch of... Like, you're talking to, like I said, you know you're talking to... Uh, so, it went from pages where mom just said 911, get your fucking ass home. Yes. 90 seconds of two-way pages where you would just text each other, but it was a pager, you couldn't call. And then, like, almost immediately afterwards, there was cell phones. So, you couldn't do the same thing with both you had... So, you, so all right, so here we go. Pager yep. had to go to a payphone. Yes. Pager, a uh, two-way pager. You could text. You could text to, uh, like, someone said 911, you could say, what? But the other person had to have a two-way, a two-way pager. two-way pager. Yeah. Pretty sure how that's, that's yeah. how it worked. Yeah. Because it had a full fucking keyboard. Yeah. Right? And then, like I said, 90 seconds later, they're like, this is a terrible idea. You should be able to call when you're on fucking the side of a road. And they brought out a fucking phone. <laughs> and then they, everyone was like, yeah, fuck these things anyways. <laughs> but like a lot of people thought that was like the newest technology. And they're probably all dead now because they all blew their brains out on a two-way pager uh, that lasted less than fucking cooking minute rice <laughs> in a microwave. Did you have one? I did not. I did not. You had a regular pager. I had a regular pager. Uh, and then I had for like the first year of cell phones, that like my, my yeah. era of cell phones, my cell phone didn't even work. I just played it with Snake. I had the Nokia. Played Snake on. So you had, no, you had nothing? I had zero. And then, like, <laughs> I I, fi- finally I got, like, a, I got the very, very, very first camera phone. That was my first phone. Yeah. And it was a flip phone. It was a Sanyo. And like it was three the pixel. craziest technology ever. Yeah. Texting, fucking hitting a million buttons, <laughs> downloading 117 ringtones for no reason, going on the internet. The bill was, like, $1,400. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, bills are crazy now. Bills, when I first got them, not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruined my credit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was similar. I was an idiot. Um, yeah, I, and I think that it is ironic that, like, not only did the... It was also the people who had the fucking pay phones got fucked, too, like 9X. It was oh, yeah. like, they were probably raking. You just said a name that doesn't even exist That anymore. doesn't even exist. I am dying. Pacific I, I, One, I Atlantic you, Bell. Now, I do... I, like, there's a lot of work that's gone into this crotch. There's one thing that I'm dying to get, and I've been so close a bunch of times, but they're expensive. I want a payphone to hang on the wall. I want like a they're, 9X, they're like 300 bucks. I heard they're expensive. Yeah, like yeah. Three, 350, something like that. But I mean, how fucking sick would it be to have a fucking payphone back here? Yeah. Fucking hanging on the wall. Yeah. Fucking right. So then we could get two way pages, and then we could get a page. <laughs> Call each that, other. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it hooked up to the fucking thing. I want to know how much two way page is. I'm going to look that up. Hey, it's got to be fucking. Um, but se- seriously, though, like, think about like all like the investors. You're like, this is it. This Dude. is it. But they all know. I think they all know because, like, I remember I had one of those flip cameras. Do you know what those were? It was a company called Flip. And it was, like, a camera the size of a cell phone. And it was sick. They had a USB stick. It came right out, shot HD. And you could stick it right in your computer and you could download video. And all of a sudden, one day, they're like, we're not making them anymore. I'm like, what? These things are sick. Like, they were, like, 80 bucks, 90 bucks, right? And you could take, because they knew already that the iPhone fucking video was coming out. And they were fucking smushed. Yeah. Like, they were done. You know what I mean? Well, what was the, what was the other, um... MP3 player besides iPod. Oh, um, Z- Zoom or Z- Zoom? Yeah, Zoom. yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing lasted just as long as a fucking two-way page. Huh? Yeah, they just yeah. Been, they just my, get erased. It's like dude, I saw one of the fun. Do you? Have, by the, the funny way, thing is, whoever owns that company is probably a jillionaire anyway. By the way, irrelevant. 
totally off topic, but this made me think of it because I, I, I almost brought up Microsoft. You guys have to, if, if you're not already on Instagram following Blowing Facts, are you on this? No. Dude, <laughs> you'll be on the shit up for hours just scrolling through, and it's all true. So the reason I bring this up, Microsoft held a funeral, and there's a picture of it, of them holding the iPhone when they put out their version of, like, the smartphone. <laughs> like the Windows phone or whatever? Dude, they had, they were carrying the iPhone like a casket, and they're all dressed in black. And I saw, and I go, ah! I was on the shit up. Ah! Chris, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I'm like, that's the funniest thing ever. And she's like, that's the bad. And I was dying. You go on blow, it's at blowingfacts.com. At blowingfacts on, on Instagram. It is the most. Fast or facts? Facts. 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 Okay. And there's a picture of, like, Abraham Lincoln on it, so you know it's all right. Dude, it is incredible. Because I was going to say, blowing, fat, blowing Fast could be another, like the sequel to Beat Street, I think. Like, that could be the sequel to that. But if you've got that movie under your bed, too. Uh, that could be a double entendre. That could be like blowing your load fast while on cocaine. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, I got one. Um, I think I've talked about this actually on the podcast. I'm pretty fucking sure I have. Maybe like the second podcast, the third. But I'm going to bring it back because it is a fad that really was a huge part of my life for a long time. I think I've told it a bunch of times. But when I was like fourth, fifth grade, fourth, fifth, sixth, something like that, um, ninjas were a big part of my life. They were, they were in my life all the time. Yep. Um, I was renting the same ninja movies, same martial arts movies. Uh, I was fucking Bruce Lee's fucking, I've seen every Bruce Lee movie they made, everything. I had subtitles going on in my house before anybody thought foreign movies were cool. That's awesome. I was fucking Bruce Lee was fixing telephones and then fucking fixing people up fucking left and right. Fucking bow staff. Um, <clears throat> I used to buy ninja ma- magazines where there used to be, I don't know, who, I gotta find out who this guy was. It was always this white dude on the cover with like a huge beard with like these ninja claws like in a fucking tree because you need to know how to do that to fucking have a good life in America. Um, Obviously. Like I thought like ninjas were a big, like big sick pot of life. Like, not a lot of job security ninjas, I guess, apparently. <laughs> no, you know no. what I mean? Like, they're not as needed as we, I thought they were. Um, <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, why can't they own a nunchucks? Or like, maybe they're that stealth. Yeah, and I think I've also told this, that, like, I, all I want to do is go to, like, karate or kung fu. Like, it's yeah. all I want to do. My father's like, no, absolutely not. Like, not, you're not going to be a kung fu kid, basically. And I'm glad he didn't send me. Um, but, yeah, I thought, like. Job security thought, of a ninja. I thought ninjas would be, like, a very big part of my life. And then, as we're looking at Raiden. As I'm looking at the Mortal Kombat machine. <laughs> um, and then it transferred into, like, I loved, like, Steven Seagal movies. Steven Seagal's, I, we haven't gotten into this. And it now, uh, we always drop a fraud along the way. Yeah. Steven Seagal's one of the biggest frauds of all time. Biggest, pro- possibly the captain of the fraud squad. Steven Seagal, for the people who don't know at home, his movies still fuck. His, his original movies fuck. Yeah. Um, once he got the goatee, he's lost. He, he once he gained, he looks like fucking like he's lost his compl- his noodle is gone. Wilfred Brimley, like, with, <laughs> and he's got like dyed black hair, like so that's not real hair. He's also has like <laughs> ninety eight sexual abuse cases against him. Do you know this? I did not. Oh, he's like, and he's friends with Putin. Like they're like, I boy, knew that. He knew is that. like, he is actually like what a dictator is. Like, but he's not a dictator. He's just like a bad movie star. He's, he he has the best Steve Seagal story I've ever heard in my life. This is a true story. <laughs> <laughs> like he had like a guy who was like his agent. The guy got him into the business. He was a trainer for another guy. And this, he was a trainer for his agent. And his agent was like, dude, I think you could be a star. He had a fire in the guy, right? <laughs> and one of the stories that the agent told was that the agent shows up at his house and Seagal's like in there and he's in tears. And he goes, what's the matter? And he goes, Steven Seagal says, I just read the greatest script I've ever read <laughs> Any time. Did I tell this on the show? I think you did. Fuck. I'm telling it again. And he goes, who wrote it? He goes, I did. <laughs> That's worth telling twice. I don't care if I already told it. Uh, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, so he's like, so as I got older, I was like, fuck. Like, <laughs> this shit's all fake. Like, when I found out John claude got his ass kicked in a bar at a strip club. Yep. Um, but who was the guy who used to be on Stern all the time? It was like a fucking biker guy. Um, somebody at home will text me this shortly, I'm sure. Uh, was he, was he an angel? Yeah, I think so. You know what I'm talking the about. The dude from, uh, New York. Yeah. Chuck, um. Chuck, Chuck, uh, Zito. yes. Chuck Zito. He beat the bag out of him, like, in a fucking, he in, did. like, a strip club. Well, Chuck Zito's, like, a fucking. Bad bl- man. Like a kickboxer, though. Yeah. 
like fucking triple Brazilian black yeah. belt. And meanwhile, like John Claude and, is and like, a biker on top. John Claude is like a gymnast. Like he's not a <laughs> fucking tough person. Probably. You ever see his, you ever see his moves? Yeah. 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 Oh, it's unbelievable. Um. So, anyways, yeah, you know martial arts. I'm oh, good. Martial arts had a heyday back then, though, dude. Like they were in every movie. Every fucking like I the watched, Karate Kid fucking set that shit on so fire. Kar- obviously, Karate Kid's like the once again white people appropriating somebody else's culture for their own <laughs> well, fucking good. Well, this is definitely a white white person flick, uh, but I, obviously, I watched Karate Kid. I watched Three Ninjas. Obviously, you ever see the movie Sidekicks with Chuck Norris? Unbelievable movie. I watched that movie religiously. Great movie. I mean, I would put it pretty on. Pretty sure I owned it. Pretty no, I definitely owned it. I would put it on. Watch the entire thing, rewind it, watch it again for hours. Yeah. For hours. I wanted to be that kid so bad. I even wanted to have asthma because the kid was fucking just pumping his thing. You know, like it, that movie was just, he's just daydreaming, thinking about Chuck Norris. I'm like, that's me. It's they fucking were, me. It, it's not again to the fact that, like, the longer, the fat, the longer I would get as I was into it, the more, like, ridiculous I liked the movies. Yeah. Like, there was Remo Williams, which is a fucking lights out movie. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's about a guy who's a cop in New York, and he yeah, gets caught like a fire, and then he gets like a new face, and then like they decide to make him like he has like a master who can like walk on water and like teaches him how to like throw dishes in the dark. It's amazing. Uh, and then there was a movie called Jim Cotta, which the fucking trailer for this movie is the most fascinating. Thing. It's about a gymnast karate guy who has to ascend through a castle filled with dwarves, um, like walk on his hands and shit. Obviously. I got. I, I I'll put the trailer up if you take acid. You should take acid, then watch the <laughs> fucking trailer of this movie. Anyways, um, I'm going on too far. But karate, karate movies, they had their day in the in the, in the sun, and I was there for it at all times. Oh, they need. A, I really wish they weren't. It got to me with a fork that, like, if I would watch The Karate Kid, that would be, like, softcore porn to me. That wasn't Beat Street. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was <laughs> fucking weak-ass shit, you know? <laughs> I, ha- I mean, I can go on and on about one-hit wonders. The last one on my list right now yep. is an actual one-hit wonder. Song. Yeah, okay. I think we're getting there. That's what I was going to say. Crash Test Dummies. Oh, <laughs> there was this boy who never had to hurt a The name of the song is called... <laughs> <laughs> and then it breaks. And then they go right back to it. Who the fuck signed off on that? That song is... It was now, a man who... <laughs> see, here's the thing about One Hit Wonder songs, as we're getting in there. We'll get back and talk about this guy, who looks like he's from fucking Lord of the Rings, by oh, the way. The... Complete creature of an individual. Um, I could have used a Malden song, by the way, but I didn't. Well, we got time. We got time. We're, this has not been that long. Um, yeah, we can One of the things about One Hit Wonder is in couple, general. Let's do a in general, one yes. Hits. In general, this is my thing about One Hit Wonder songs. They made bank. Most of the time, they made bank. Most of the time, you can kind of get a sense, or at least I can, that, like, what they've done in this song, they can't replicate this. It's, like, it's a little bit, it's, like, almost like, one hit one is a lot of times, like, you've never heard anything like it. So it's, like, that's not going to be their style in general. You know what I mean? Like, like they're not going to be able to replicate that and then do other shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, when when a song is that big, like, like, like that song, what's the next song going to be like? Meh, 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 meh. You know what I mean? Fucking Muppets. Like, I, <laughs> I, I don't... I just remember going, like, back when, like, what was that guy's... Kurt Loda? Was that the guy on MTV? Fucking A. What a, what a memory. Steel how, trap. How old is he right now? Oh, like a thousand. He has to be, right? He was old. He was, like, in his 50s when, in the yeah. 90s. I think he's, like, a legit, like, journalist now, though. He's, like, he's like a CNN guy or something like that. Really? Something, something like, legit, dude. But he... I just remember, like, when I would come home from school and put on MTV on Channel 36 at the time. Yep. Or 28, wow, I forget. fucking 36. It was 36? 36. All right. Come on. So 36 was uh, MTV, and we would put it on. 29 and- was VH1. That's right, you motherfucker. <laughs> uh, that would just be on. Yeah. Like, almost immediately afterwards would be fucking... More than words from extreme. <laughs> Shout out to Malden. Shout out to Malden. Was thirty four. Gary Sharon. Was thirty four thirty three uh, USA. Thirty. Hold on. Thirty two <laughs> was TNT. Thirty three was USA. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to remember. Thirty was, was ESPN. Fucking up all night before I got to Beat Street. <laughs> uh, I uh, so I told so I think that song. I feel like a lot of one hit wonders. I'm not like. I usually am like, I think the song is kind of a fraud. Like, I can tell, I, I, and I usually don't like them. Like, I usually am like, not not because I'm trying to be a hater. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I love a good tune. Like, I'll fuck, I don't care how popular it is. Like, all the fucking people out there who live in my world of, like, Americana folk music will be like, Wagon Wheel, overplayed. Wagon Wheel fucks. That's why people want to hear it's it. That song kills. I'll play yeah. it every fucking time. I was um, so hurt when it wasn't, when I found out it wasn't Darius Rucker's song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, it's like, not I, even an Old Crow song. It's a fucking old Dylan song that they it's just, made. I know. They you changed, broke my heart yeah. when you told me that one yeah. night. And I was like, what do you mean it's not an Old Crow song? And then you're like, yeah, it's... It's fucking Dylan. It does, yeah. It's fucking bullshit. It's, dude, it is, it, but yeah, Darius. But, to, to my defense, I still think Darius' version is the best. Uh, yeah, People I mean. People will argue me that, and that's fine. That's it, fine. The song is amazing. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. The song, you can have any Tom, Dick, and Harry who can who can carry a tune can play it, and it's going to be good. Correct. That's That's how good that song is. Right. I used to sing my daughter to sleep with it almost every night when she was, like, Riley's age. Hell yeah. Just carry around the kitchen and sing that song. Um... So, all right. So here's here's another one of the of the songs. We can rattle all through a few of these songs. Oh, I would love to. Um, and this song was very big when I was younger. Here's one thing I do not do. As a, and I think you'll appreciate this. Yeah. I think you will definitely hold the same thing as me. As somebody who liked to dance back in the day, as somebody who likes to look at dance as like an act of creativity mm-hmm. and like very singular to the person that's doing it, right? Much like a, a performer who sings or an artist who draws. Any type of line dancing. Any type of coordinated <laughs> dancing, a.k.a. the Maka fucking Reina. Whoa! Dude, let me tell you right now. I don't get in the line with everybody when they do it, all right? I'm waiting for, like, shit that I could be individual on. I think the Maka Reina is, like, I, I don't even know what it's for. Who sings it? Uh, you've never heard of Macarena? Of hey, Macarena. Of course I... Yeah, I can't I, remember. I didn't even write it down, because who, who cares? No, but that's my point. Who the fuck sings it? Who the it? fuck sings it? Yeah. Some guy is rich, probably, or his record company's rich. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And yes, it's, do I know how to do it? Of course I do. Of course you know how to do it. And I know how to do it. And also, like, it's, you know not, a, it's actually not a bad song. You know who loves the Macarena? Who? Caucasians at campgrounds. Hun- Dude, do you know... The, <laughs> I can't even believe you're saying this. Because when I was in the fucking eighth grade... This kid, Bob uh, something, brought me up to his campground. And his parents had a camper. And we went to the fucking center of the fucking thing where they had the dance. And the Macarena was the... They played it three times that night. Three fucking times. Karen and Tom is out there going, look at me. Oh, they love it. (laughs) They love it. Because they know it. Kelchin! Yeah, because they fucking know it. Let's get tacos! Nothing's more predictable. Get a little crazy. Grab some hot sauce. (laughs) Nothing's more predictable than some overweight... Trash white woman dragging her friend off the fucking oh. off the bar, cock blocking some poor bastard who's yep. gonna get laid tonight. Right, dragging her into the Macarena. Yeah. Like it happens fucking every time. Yeah, I guess there's only one tequila shot now. <laughs> she's out there fucking doing a fucking Macarena. That was a great call, brother. Macarena. Um. Okay. Now I looked up one hit wonders. Yep. Because I want I don't want to steal your thunder yet. No, you ain't. I'm gonna still, let you bounce you back real quick. I'm I'm gonna the one that I'm gonna say next, and I have a few, but the one I'm gonna say next, you there's no chance you heard of it. Okay. And we're gonna listen to it after we play Say Something after we end the show. Okay. No. Rush. Um. So. I told the story a couple weeks ago where uh, Maggie won the snowboard by yep. singing "Baby Got Back." So I looked up all the one hit wonders. I mean, "Baby Got Back" gotta be on now. Well, it is, but here's my problem. I think Sir Mix has got a few dis- decent songs besides that. I don't, I don't think I know any. <laughs> Why was I like a mix a lot guy? Anyways, he has this, uh, this B-side. Was he, on the, was he on the Beat Street soundtrack? <laughs> Dude, I got to say this, and I don't know why. It's like my buddy bought the tapes where he used to listen to it all the time. Uh, but his single was like, the B-side was a song called Cake Boy. And what a Cake Boy is, which nobody knows, the B-side, that's not even on his album. It, we fucking love it. Shout out to my boy Anthony Riccati out in Colorado. Uh, a cake boy is like the way he describes it in the song. He's like straight up cake boy. It's like straight cake to the bone. It's like a pretty boy who's like trying to steal your your, your chick, but he's a fucking fraud. You know what I mean? He's all like fucking uh, I'll, greased I'll bring, up. I'll and bring like that fucking, up. Dude, this fucking cake. Calling somebody, but nobody knew. So we would be like, look at that fucking cake boy. And they would have no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> so it was like we, we didn't get it beat up. You know what I mean? That's it was great. great. All right, you're up. So this song, I've heard, I've only seen the video once. And then I thought about it like two weeks ago, and I was like, who the fuck made this song? And I remember seeing Little John in it, right? But he he didn't... I just looked it up now. Still don't know the name of it, but it's on YouTube. The name of the song is called That Baby Don't Look Like Me. <laughs> it is one of the greatest videos you've ever seen in your life, and it's like takes place in, like, in front of like Mari Povich. 
like it looks like that type of element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, that baby don't look. And the guy's up there, that baby don't look <laughs> like me. Like, it's fucking incredible. So it was on, it was on like, uh, I don't know, fucking the basement before, like, it was on like 106 and Pac. Yeah. And I remember watching this video, I go, how did this get approved? <laughs> Never saw it again, like, live on TV, but I, it, the song was always in my head. Yeah, yeah. So I looked at him a couple weeks ago and go, oh, my God, Little John was in the fucking video? <laughs> and he's just there just promoting it. There's, he made 67 cents on that song. <laughs> he did not make a fucking dime. Look that song up. It's called That Baby Don't Look Like Me, and you'll just see fucking a couple dudes from Atlanta in your, in your grill like this with sunglasses and grills. It's fucking hysterical. <laughs> and they're talking about not being the father of their child. <laughs> oh my god I'm, di- I'm laughing too hard over here right now um, Alright, I got one more and then you can Take it out from here Sure. Um, now, I want to Start by saying that this song is When I tell you It's just one of my favorite songs in the world I is, And I don't know But I think it is definitely a one hit wonder But the song Throws So much heat that like I like I was saying before, I think I always can tell what a one hit wonder is. It's bullshit yep. and all that stuff. With this song, Sugar Hill Gang, oh, Rapper's Delight. Now they didn't have much follow up to this song. I looked into it. I know the whole 17, 17 minute song. I used to know the entire thing. Yeah, I know. Um, it all. I know it all. I think I do anyway. I don't know. I uh, I definitely know the whole food scene, yeah. um, <laughs> so, which is like just the greatest. You gotta have that song in yeah. your fucking handle. Yeah, uh, it has one of the best beats. Yeah, Ever. It's, and it's, Best. it's very simple, but it's fucking gets to the point. Dude, and it's, I always, lo- like, I always say, whenever, like, I'm, um, if I'm trying to learn a song on the guitar that's not my song and somebody else wrote it, if it's, like, a story song, I can get it like that. Because I, like, that's a lot of rap is, like, story songs. So, like, I used to be able to memorize rap, so I can memorize that. When it's, like, Nirvana, it's, like, you know, there's a fucking tree and a fucking <laughs> baby fell out of it. Like, I'm, like, I can't remember that shit. How that but, like, happened? that's a Sugar Hill Gang, like, I can fucking remember, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, that song is, that song makes me fucking happy. The, the minute you hit the hit, uh-huh, yeah. the hit, the hit, the hit <laughs> everyone's just like, you could be, again, you could be in a fucking, in a morgue. If yeah. You're, if you're the guy, you know, looking at a fucking body that just got riddled with bullets and that song comes on over the speakers somehow, it's like taking the bullets out of somebody. And, and I know it's not like, I'm no, obviously no rap historian, but. I believe it's like one of the first like big time yeah, rap so, tunes of all so, time. That song was in the seventies. Yeah, that was Late like the 70s. birth of rap, basically. Yeah. Like like that song so fucks. It, uh, I actually know like where it, where rap came out, but like that wasn't the first one. But I think that might have been like one of the first videos. Yeah, like you could if you watch that video, it's like fucking. That's a seventy. But that song, for that song, still like I can guarantee you if you play that song like I don't think I've ever played it for my kids but I can guarantee you tomorrow I definitely am so if you play it for your kids they will know some of the lyrics in a week 100% it's just yeah. a, it's just a memorable song yeah and the macaroni sell the peas yeah. on most day and the chicken <laughs> tastes, tastes like, like wood. wood like it's just it's one of those songs it is fucking lights out awesome and it sucks that it's on the one hit wonder list <laughs> it does suck but you know what it's like one of those tunes it's like I'm sure they made no money off of it Right. Somehow, some record company probably made jillions off it. Somebody's right. still making jillions off it. Uh, but the world is a much better place for having it in it. And it, it, I mean, it transcends. The other thing that song did is like it transcended like race. Like, like it transcended like it like was the vid- everybody the fucking. The video, that video reminds me of like how life should be because it's not just black people, it's not just white people. Like, everyone's in that club probably rolling their tits off on acid. Yeah. And they're just having that fucking time of their life. You look great, you know? <laughs> How's your melanin, you know? Just fucking, everyone's having a great time. If acid didn't, I've never done acid in my life. If it didn't, like, affect your body, like, I feel like everyone should be on acid. Yeah. Everyone's just having a great time. Everyone on acid would look like I think you're thinking of, you're confusing acid with Molly, but uh, some people Molly, can have a bad time on Molly acid. Molly was great. <laughs> Molly was great. Yeah. But acid, I've never done that. I don't, it scares me. It does, it does. But, like, I feel like everyone on acid was the people in Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun video. Yeah. Where, like, everyone's smile just came up to the earlobes. You ever yeah. see that video? Yeah. Creepy. Yeah. Right up my alley, but. Yeah. I think I, I'll give you my view on acid is, like, <laughs> acid's, like, being, like, hey, like, 80% chance you're going to have a blast. 
Twenty percent chance you give me the fetal position, like fucking sucking your thumb for like nine hours. I know someone that had a bad time. Yeah, yeah, but it happens. It, yeah, it happens. I mean, but here's the last thing I'll say about that: if you are gonna do it, remember this. As a good friend of mine likes to tell people, you do the drugs, don't let the drugs do you. Correct. That came from the Dare uh, crew, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thrown away one. Um, all right, you got one more. I do. Uh, well, it's one and a half because I think the. The all-time one-hit wonder that neither I thought you were going to mention, but you didn't. Never going to give you up, Rick Astley. Oh, yeah. Jam. Absolute jam. It's a jam. And the video's inc- you up. It's incredible. There was a thing today that was like, there's no way you'll get this. And it was the Wheel of Fortune board with nothing on it. And it just said 80s lyrics. This is 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm waiting to get it. Like, I go. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, five letters here, five letters. I was like, never going to give you up, never going to let you down. I was like, it's fucking 80s lyrics. I know exactly what it is. Right? <laughs> um... But One Hit Wonder cannot stand the song. I think it gives Boston a bad eye. Sure. I think people from around the world think we love this song and we don't. Sweet Caroline. Brutal song. And I don't know if it's a One Hit Wonder because Neil Diamond is a zillionaire. Yeah. But. No, I mean, he has he has fucking songs. For songs. Days. But like. Yeah. I'm not a Neil Diamond guy, but Neither I have friends who are Neither like, I. I've well, like, been bands with that. Like, put it this, I mean, they bring them on family to sing the song, and like, here's, here's what also Maybe piss- our board people love fucking Here's what pisses out. me off about Boston, too, though, right? So, like, in center field, there's a whole bunch of, like, season ticket holders. So, like, when people do the wave, they don't do it. Yeah. That drives me nuts. Yeah. Sweet Caroline comes on, they don't do it. I'm on board with that. <laughs> I'm on board with that. But yep. they... Some of those season ticket holders are just miserable fucks. Yeah, of course. And, they, and they're just not, and I mean this with, like, the most disrespect. Like, stop being a cunt. Yeah, I you're agree. At a fucking, you're at the best fucking stadium yeah, in baseball history. in the history, best city in the world. In the best city in the world. And, like, there's a kid next to you that's 11 years old that's at his first game, and all he wants to do is go, and you won't stand up? Why? Because no. cause that's what they do. Yeah, exactly. Fuck off. Yeah, pink hats. But... When Neil Diamond comes on and everyone's doing the fucking yeah. hey, Carol, I go to the bathroom. Ah, uh, dude, I hate I it. I stick my head in the toilet. I fucking hate it's it. It's stupid. I have one last uh, one hit wonder song because uh, I have to talk about this because it was the first video I can remember ever seeing. And it's a fascinating video. There's a song which they've remixed into like dance songs at, at times. Okay. Uh, there's a song by a, a group called Men Without Hats called Safety Dance. You can dance if you want to, if you really, really want to dance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking jam, right? <laughs> now, the video, yeah. which I, we're going to watch after this at some point, uh, is basically a fucking, it's like whatever was happening around the Braveheart scene outside, like there's guys in like Braveheart type clothes running around, but then there's a bunch of midgets in it. That like jump up out of like, yeah, yeah. like they fucking wave and shit. Yeah. And it's like in England, in like the countryside, never <laughs> being like, I remember thinking I'm on acid when I was like six or whatever it was when yeah. so I watched it. Some of these videos, man, like I, the director's like, what were they on? Dude, I heard somebody on, I forget what band it was, but they were talking about like how they got on MTV and how they got big. And they were like, yeah, they were like, if you make a video. So he's like, we made a video on like a Tuesday and on like Thursday, it was like on MTV. And by the next week, we were fucking the top 10 and we were rich. Bloodhound gang. Like, had to have been them. Dude, it was like, that's how it happened. You and me, baby. Take on, on me. Game. Take you on me. That was me, one baby, one. baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> Get horny now. That's another one. I mean, there's uh, so many. All right. This was a winter episode, I think, by the way. This is one of the most fun I've had in a while. It was good because, like, we had, like, a whole bunch of one-hit wonders that definitely were a fucking breakdance. I can't believe they made the list. You're right, though. Ah, <laughs> oh, fucking shit's the fucking best. You know, they made a breakdance a video game, too, called Breaking. It sucked. It's brutal. Like, you had to hit the buttons in a certain way to get, like, a fucking backspin and shit. That's like, it was almost like landing the fucking... Anybody from the old Nintendo days knows that you can't... If you could fucking land the, uh... If you could land the fucking plane in Top Gun, I mean, I guess you could you could fucking do brain surgery tomorrow, <laughs> breaking the women, because you fucking must be... Your hands must be fucking golden. Um, all right. We're taking off. We're gonna, so, where are you, so where are you going tomorrow? I'm going to Maine. I'm leaving Maine. to go to Maine tomorrow. Like, Old Ocean Beach area. Hell yeah. That's my fucking white trash people up there. Hell yeah. fucking people. Hell yeah. What time are um, you leaving? I'm leaving Early? like, nah, I'm getting a haircut. We'll be up there around like three. Hotel room for a couple nights, then we rent a house for a week. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah. We got a few vacations this year. 
Uh, undeserved and deserved. We'll see. But anyways, well, listen, man, we'll be back, and then next Sunday, a week from when you guys are hearing this, it'll be Monday or Sunday night. Uh, a week from the day that you're hearing this, you'll have another episode. Fucking right. Yeah. You want to know why? Because we fu- we're here for you. Yeah. And lastly, uh, like we said, like keep you know drop a fucking oh, drop a, two things. I gotta say, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Even if you're not watching it, it helps us like show up in other people's shit. Um, and by the way, also I thought to my I, I was telling my buddy about the breakdancing thing this morning real quick, yep. and he's like, I was like, yeah, I was the fucking man. And I'm like, that's why my life has been spent trying to get approval since then. Because I was like the fucking guy in first grade, and then it was like, now you're going to have to fight for it the rest of your life. Well, well, I mean, that, that's me, right? So I'm a, I'm a dancer. I can do impressions. I do the, And I, now I'm just a circus act. All right, yeah. well, now fucking help me out, dude. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to see us break dance, by the way, when we have a Patreon at some point, once we get to 100 members, me and Daniel will do a break dancing show for everybody. Um, I'm with it. Merrill's will never all right, be the same so listen, again. subscribe on the YouTube channel if you can. When we post something on Facebook, like, fucking like it. Don't share just it. it. Share it. Do the shit. We're going to have shirts and shit soon. I can send out a bunch of You know, of it's stickers. wild. It shows that, like, you have 500 viewers. Yeah. I don't see 500 fucking shares. No. I Be a pal. Yeah, exactly. Be exactly. a pal. Be a pal. Um, you want a fucking sticky? You want some shirts? You got shirts in the mix coming out? I got some stickers going tomorrow. I sent a bunch <laughs> of stickers out uh, last week. Now, we asked people to share and shit. If you want some stickers, just send us a DM. We'll send you some stickers. Correct. Um, and also, like I said, help us out. Leave a comment on, on fucking YouTube. Just say, hey, these guys are the shit. Also, like, some guy tagged us in, like, some famous podcast thing. He's like, you guys gotta, you gotta check these guys out. Let them know. Fucking, we're here. Oh, I, By the way, we're not going anywhere, either. You're stuck with us. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm having way too much fun doing this. Yeah. I really am. Exactly. I totally agree. Um, all right, now. I, uh, no. They... Like, share, subscribe, fucking... Leave a comment. Leave These guys a comment. are funny. They're awesome. Leave a comment. Do it. Please. Just do it all. We're here for your entertainment, our entertainment. That's right. It's fucking hysterical. I hope you guys are laughing. I hope you guys are having a good time. Uh, I love you all, except Yankee fans. <laughs> and uh, go Sox. We start today, right? Yeah. Fuck all right. you, Yankees. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>